We all love a high energy show, but a lot of the time we think that volume equals high energy. That's a problem because everyone's experience of what loud sounds like is different and it's not always safe. In this video, we'll cover why that is. We'll talk about why we should be measuring our shows, the facts around volume and hearing damage, as well as how to measure that and when we can trust that data. By the end, you should have a better idea of what a healthy volume level is for a concert and how you can stay under volume limits but still mix a high energy show. And for a little bonus, I'll share what I've been doing wrong in the past when measuring this stuff. We often measure from front of house, but the problem is that the volume is often much louder down at the front of the stage. How much louder is the question? You'll need to measure your system to find out. But if you want to get started quickly with this, I'll leave a link down below to a PDF guide that I made that helps you find out where you should measure your system using software like Smart or Open Sound Meter. Without further ado though, let's dive in. So everyone hears sound differently. They experience volume differently. And we're gonna throw about a couple of terms here. And the first one is loudness, and the second one is SPL. Loudness is a subjective term. It's what we say to mean how we are experiencing an event. I say the concert is loud, you say the concert is quiet. I say 95 decibels is loud. You say 95 decibels is quiet. Doesn't matter, it's still 95 decibels. SPL, or sound pressure level, is an objective measurement. It measures the energy transfer in the air, the sound pressure in the air through a microphone. It gives us an absolute reading that we cannot argue with, but you and I can discuss whether we think that reading is loud. However, what we cannot discuss is whether the numbers cause hearing damage, because we know objectively that they do at a certain point. There are many things that affect how we perceive loudness. One of the most important things is the tonality of the mix, how it sounds. So you could be sitting in the audience at a 100 decibel gig, and it's a nice smooth mix, and you think, this is lovely, but it's very, very hazardous to your hearing. Or you could be standing at the mix position, mixing an 85 decibel gig, but if the tonal content is all off, it's really, really sharp and nasty, then you think it's a lot louder. You say, oh, this is horrible, but it's actually not even in a dangerous level yet. That's why we need to measure. There's actually a few reasons why we should measure. One of the first ones is actually just consistency. If you're measuring the SPL level of your show, then you know how loud your show is. And you can focus on keeping that show at the same volume from night to night. The second reason that you might want to do this is to keep yourself on the right side of the law. There are many places that have sound pressure level limits for how loud you can actually play a show. And this ties in really nicely with knowing how loud your show is, because if you know how loud your show is, then when you walk into a venue and the local tech says, yeah, we operate you know, this limit, you can say, that's great because my show is actually here, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. And also it lets you know how much you need to turn down your show by. If you're measuring it, you know, okay, maybe I'm gonna be a bit above the limit, I just need to keep it two decibels quieter. The third reason why you need to measure SPL is that it's about protecting your hearing and everyone else's, the whole point of this video. So let's talk a little bit about that hearing. There's this concept of a dose, right? And that is how much sound you should be exposed to in a given day. Usually it is set out as a working day. There are various legislative bodies that decided on a bunch of numbers and they are more or less in agreement that 85 decibels over a work day is the agreeable limit. This means that you can listen to 85 decibels for eight hours and that will give you 100% of your daily dose of noise. But it doesn't take into account like the other things that you're doing that day. Like if you were outside using power tools and things like that, that also comes into your dose. They're also in agreement that if you listen to noise, which is louder than 85 decibels, then you can only listen for a shorter period of time. Think about it like a car. You have a fuel tank. The fuel tank is full. And in this hypothetical scenario, you can drive at 85 miles an hour for eight hours, and then the tank will be empty. You will have used 100% of your tank. Similarly, if you drive the car faster than 85 miles an hour, you will empty the tank quicker. So you will use 100% of your tank in less time. So let's pull some numbers out here because we're not mixing concerts at 85 decibels, are we? We're probably mixing concerts more like 95 decibels. So there's one legislative body that says that for every five decibels you increase the volume, you can only, you're only permitted to listen to it for half as much time. So you go from 85 to 90 decibels, now you've only got four hours. You go from 90 to 95 decibels, now you've only got two hours. Great. But there are other organizations which are more concerned with health and hearing damage. And they actually say that 
for every three decibels you increase, you, you half the amount of time that you can be exposed. So they're saying that at 88 decibels, you can listen for four hours. And at 91 decibels, you can listen for two hours. We're mixing a concert at 95, let's say. The problem here is that organization one says, great, you've used 25% of your dose. But organization two says, not great, you've used 125% of your dose. There's a bit of disagreement here, but I think you should be aware that 95 decibels is still really loud and can still cause hearing damage. The main difference here between the public and us working at the events is that the public might only go to four or five shows a year. They're actually not getting exposed to these hazardous levels all the time. Whereas you and I are listening to them four or five days a week, sometimes more in the busy season. We might rack up a thousand percent of our daily exposure over a long workday. That's why it's really, really important to be aware of these measurements and also to use hearing protection. And for the sake of completeness here, these measurements are A-weighted as opposed to C-weighted. A-weighted curves correlate quite well with hearing loss and hearing damage. So we use A-weighted for this stuff. If this has been useful for you so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got loads of other great stuff about mixing better shows. Based off of this information, we want to measure stuff, right? So you're like, oh great, I'm gonna get myself a measurement microphone. I'm gonna plug it in smart or open sound meter and I'm just gonna turn the SPL measurement on. But you need to think holistically about your whole signal chain when you're setting this up because the way decibels work, the whole logarithmic scale thing, means that even a slight deviation in accuracy can actually cause quite a different reading over the course of an hour long concert. So here's some best practices I got from a rational acoustics webinar, which I'll leave a link to down below if you wanna check it out, it's an hour long. You want your microphone to be able to handle 140 decibels without clipping. Why is that? You think to yourself, I'm not mixing a gig at 140 decibels, I don't need that. And there's two reasons for this. The first one is A weighting. And so because we're using this filtering to approximate how humans hear sound, we are getting a lower decibel reading than the actual pressure level, which would be the instantaneous level, or C-weighted level would be closer to that. And the second reason is that we often see some form of averaging. You often see A weighting fast or slow, but even fast A weighting is going to be like 100 milliseconds or so. I'm not sure the exact number, but it's not instantaneous. So if you're seeing a number 100 decibels at A weighted fast, you might still be going above 140 decibels instantaneous reading. So even though your average is lower, if your microphone is not rated to handle 140 decibels, then you're gonna clip your microphone. And if you clip your microphone, then you can't trust your measurement anymore. The second thing that you need to be aware of is the sensitivity of your microphone and the sensitivity of the input on your sound guard that you're using to connect to Smart or Open Sound Meter and measure this stuff. And what you need to look for is you need to look for this number, which is in Pascal. And I won't get into the mathematics behind what Pascals are. It's fairly straightforward. Ask ChatGPT, it'll explain it better than me. With a bit of rough maths, you take the sensitivity number in Pascals and you multiply it by 200. And basically that will give you the voltage that will come out of your microphone when it receives 140 decibels. And that will be in millivolts, right? So you divide that by 100 to give you volts. 1000 millivolts becomes one volt. If you have a very, very sensitive microphone, 140 dB SPL can turn out to be an awful lot of volts. And that can really, really easily clip the input of your microphone preamp, even though you're turned all the way down. So what you need to do is get this Pascal number, you multiply it by 200, which then gets you the millivolt number. Then you want to look up the maximum input level for your interface. It might give you this in DBU. Again, smash it into ChatGPT or use the internet to convert the DBU number to actual volts. And then you ask yourself, okay, my microphone is going to create X number of volts. Is my preamp rated for X number of volts at its lowest gain setting? So if the combination of 140 decibels, the sensitivity of your microphone and the sensitivity of your input, if that all lines up, that means no clipping, then you're good to go. If it means clipping, then you're essentially ruining your average measurements because you can't trust that data anymore. Let me give you an example of how I was doing this wrong and how I was just clipping my input all the time. I've been using the Sonarworks microphone, right? And so you Google this microphone and you see that it has a sensitivity of 14 millivolts slash pascals, whatever you wanna say that. We do our little calculation. We do 14 times 200, which gives us a number of 2,800 millivolts. Convert that to volts, that's 2.8 volts, awesome. 
I'm using a second gen Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. So we just look up the manual for this and we find the input sensitivity or input level sensitivity, maximum input level, something like that. Just control F in the manual, find that number. I found out that it says it's plus four dBU. Smash that into chat GPT, tell it to give us it in volts. What's that number in volts? It's 1.23 volts. Do you see the problem here? My microphone at 140 decibels is generating nearly double what my preamp can handle. So I'm basically just clipping the thing all the time. So all my measurements were totally off. And a lot of this for me is mostly due to the interface. I checked online and the sensitivity of the newer Focusrite Scarlett interfaces, so the generation four versions, is actually, what is it? 16 dBU, which equals about 4.9 volts. So if I use this microphone with a more up-to-date interface, I'll actually be in the clear. Great. There's one more part of the puzzle that we need to talk about, and that's calibrators. You need to calibrate your microphone using a calibrator when you're going to measure stuff, but I'm sure there, there are videos on the internet showing you how to do this for various calibrators and microphones and software, etc. So how do we mix with this in mind? How loud is too loud? The first thing you want to think about is you want to think about the average loudness, right? We tend to use an A-weighted average measurement over a period of time, which we call LEQ. All LEQ is, is it shows us the average SPL level over a time window. So you get something called LAEQ10. That just means that it is an average, it's an A-weighted average over 10 minutes. And that's just a window that moves along as the show goes on. So you can see in the last 10 minutes, on average, what was the volume like? Using this average means that you can have dynamics in your concert. You can have quiet moments and loud moments. If you have a quiet moment and it's 90 dBA for five minutes, great. And then you have a loud moment, which is 100 dBA for five minutes. Then the 10 minute window will show that you're at 95 dB. Great, that seems like a more reasonable level to mix at than 100. So you can configure a few meters to look at when you set up smart or open sound meter or whatever. And you can have your A-weighted instant measurement or like a short average, like one second or one minute to see how loud things are right now. But then you also have your 10 minute window, right? Which tells you how loud things have been over the last 10 minutes. And that way you can say, okay, I am averaging about 100 decibels right now, which means I have been at least 100 for the last 10 minutes. So maybe I need to bring down a little bit, look at the instant meter, make sure it reads a little bit lower for the next song or so. And that way you give yourself and you give the audience a break from this constant barrage of sound. And I'd always recommend to mix just slightly quieter. Things don't need to be 100 decibels. 95 is quite enough. 95 is really loud. 100 is just ridiculous. I just, you find it a lot in like rock and metal music, but I just don't see the need for it to be so loud. That of course is my personal preference and my experience of loudness. I'll leave a video here, which is about hearing protection and I'll leave one up here, which is more about setting up and tuning your system. Leave a comment down below and let me know, do you measure? If so, how loud are your concerts usually? Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.